Osteogenesis Imperfecta, also abbreviated OI, is the topic. OI is basically a rather um, interesting disorder that is because you have a very significant disorder that characterizes itself as extreme skeletal fragility. And what that basically means is that this person or baby or child is at a risk of developing fractures very, very easily. And the reason is because they have a disorder in the collagen production, in particular collagen type 1, a deficiency in the synthesis of type 1 collagen. And collagen is important because it's the structural component of uh, all the bones and uh, ligaments and tendons. So that is at the heart of uh, osteogenesis imperfecta. Now, what tends to happen is the symptomatology uh, varies with regard to what type. So I'd like to go through the four types. Type 1, type 2, um, type 2 I'm going to write up here, type 3, and type 4. And the types are listed this way in terms of severity. I'm not sure why they did it like this, but that's the way it is. Type 1 is the mildest. Type 4, interestingly, is the intermediate form. Type 3 is the severe form, but it's non-lethal. And type 2 is the most severe, and it's lethal. And basically what that means is that usually the babies die in, in utero. So it's a very, very tragic. Let's talk a little bit about the symptoms. There's four main symptoms. You'll get a combination of any of these four on a licensing exam clinical vignette. The first one is hearing loss, and the reason there's hearing loss is because the bones of the inner ear are also affected. So that's a very important thing to remember, um, middle and inner ear. Now, the next uh, symptom is um, involving the eye, and it's actually very, very interesting if you see a picture of this. It's blue sclera, and uh, this is because of the connective tissue that, um, that usually allows the underlying vessels to show through. Uh, this is deficient, so you you can definitely, that's a very important point, because you usually don't see that in very many medical conditions. The third one, the third symptom, is pain, musculoskeletal pain. And the fourth one is the big one. This is what almost every clinical vignette will talk about this, and that is multiple fractures. Multiple fractures, and various degrees of healing um, is a very characteristic uh, sign. Now, the fourth one is actually very important because what happens with this fourth symptom is that it's often uh, mistaken for child abuse. So this is actually a very, very uh, difficult uh, medical condition to differentiate from child abuse because the child will have so many fractures and um, it kind of comes across as that, but there has to be some very specific testing done in order to differentiate child abuse from osteogenesis imperfecta, or OI. Now, the, the diagnosis is very difficult. Um, it's usually just a, a, based on history and um, presentation, but you can do an analysis of this type 1 uh, collagen. Again, very, very specific test, but that can be done. And then there's some genetic testing involved as well because osteogenesis imperfecta is transmitted in either an autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. Uh, autosomal dominant, AD, are types 1 and 4. And autosomal recessive are types 2 and 3. So genetic testing is also involved. Treatment well, the the main stay of treatment is really the orthopedic, you know, treating the fractures. It's it's pretty ongoing and just devastating to the child. Um, but what there's two things that you can do to help, and the first one is uh, these bisphosphonates, and bisphosphonates include alendronate, and what these uh, medications do is they help uh, increase the bone density. And when you increase the bone density, that can help uh, decrease the fracture frequency. And one other medication that sometimes they use is growth hormone. 
and growth hormone can help uh, elongate the bones when necessary. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes, see what this looks like. Four-year-old boy is evaluated for short stature. He has a history of multiple bone fractures in the past. He requires a wheelchair to ambulate, and he has hearing difficulty. A physical exam, his height is below the fifth percentile. His sclera are blue. There is a marked deformity of his lower extremities, which is the following most likely diagnosis. Um, well, this is obviously osteogenesis imperfecta, blue sclera, the fact that he has multiple bone fractures all point to that. And then the last one, a family suspected of child abuse because of uh, one of their children has had multiple fractures, consults an orthopedic specialist at a children's hospital. The specialist examines the child who is now five years old and notes that the child has blue tinged sclera hearing loss, and small, slightly blue, misshapen teeth. Radiologic studies confirm the presence of numerous fractures of various ages. No significant degree of bruising is seen over the sites of recent fracture. The disease that this child most likely has is related to abnormal metabolism involving which of the following substances? Well, this is classic. They, they're showing a hearing loss, which of course is because of the um, abnormalities in the bones of the middle and inner ear, the blue sclera as well. As we talked about in the video, type 1 collagen is involved in uh, osteogenesis imperfecta. The deficiency in the synthesis of type 1 collagen is what causes this uh, disorder because collagen is the stu structural component of bones, ligaments, and tendons. So it'll be choice A.